All right, so we're going to acquire a SAR image with the uh, ultra wideband FMCW radar over here, the X band system. Um, here we have the data acquisition computer running. Here's the rack of equipment. On the very bottom, sweep oscillator. Those parts aren't used. Right there, kind of in the middle, is the radar control chassis and power supply, and none of this, none of this stuff up here is being used. There's a styrofoam table where I'll place uh, targets. So the first thing we're going to do is a calibration background. So uh, we'll integrate 1,024 times and uh, just get a really nice background. So I'll start that right now. Once complete, I'll put the uh, I'll put the uh, target out there, the calibration target, which is a pole, a metal pole, and uh, we'll acquire that uh, as well. We'll range profile on that and then uh, we'll move on to a background scan. Okay, that is the calibration pole. It's located uh, 8 uh, feet, 10 and a half inches down range, and uh, we'll use that as our ideal point target. It's nice and strong, so it's important they have a very bright uh, cal target. So, uh, We'll record 1024 range profiles on that, all integrated together, and this will be our reference. So we know how far it is, and uh, we know what a cal target at 10 feet, uh, 10 feet, 8 and a half inches looks like, um, or what it ought to look like. We divide the two and then multiply it by all of the data collected next. All right, the next step is we need to jog this radar down to the end of the rail here. And uh, we'll use this GUI here to do that. So here we go, jog left, 48 inches. And this rail, it's interesting to note, it's actually made of a, a Genie garage door opener, which is a high torque garage door opener system, where there's actually a lead screw inside of this, let's see if we can focus on this, inside of this aluminum extrusion here. At the end is a stepper motor. I'll get a better view of that. With a uh, with a uh, a drill transmission right here, and then a coupling, and then right there to the lead screw. So we'll jog the radar back to the position zero, and then we will uh, begin a scan. Okay, the radar is back at the starting point, and right now there's nothing out there. And by there I mean the styrofoam table. My plan is to place a target on the styrofoam table which is basically transparent to the uh, X-band uh, microwave uh, radiation. So, slew back over here. We're going to acquire 192 range profiles at half inch increments. Um, I'm averaging 10 times for each range profile because uh, you know, in case there's anything, you know, uh, wind shaking the uh, the platform or the shrubs or whatnot, I like to kind of average that out as much as possible. So I don't really need the SNR, there's more than enough SNR to image the things we want to image today. All right, so we'll begin. So what's happening now is the radar is moving half inch at a time. It moves a half inch. It waits one second to mechanically settle down, and then it acquires 10 range profiles. The PRF is uh, about 15 to 20 hertz, so it doesn't take long to acquire 10 range profiles. But to uh, traverse the entire rail, it will take about 15 minutes. So uh, 15 minutes, and we'll have a background scan. Okay, so now we're slewing the radar back into position, and we're to image this uh, this old ship's wheel here. As you can see, it's from a boat. It should make for a pretty interesting radar image because it has a diversity of targets in both range and cross range. Right now, the radar again it's uh, slewing back to home position, so it'll take a few minutes, and then we'll uh, start again. Okay, now the radar is ready, so I'm going to start the scan again, uh, half inch uh, increments. We'll do 192 of those. So here we go.
the scan should take approximately 15 minutes. As we bounce signals off of the uh, antique ship's wheel. It's uh, interesting to note here, if we look at the range profiles, I'll zoom in a little bit, we can see this group of targets right here is most likely the ship's wheel itself. Those were not there last time in the reference scan. Okay, the radar is now done scanning and we're jogging it back to home. I will download the data and we'll process it next. Alright, so I've moved the data over here and uh, now we'll run it through the uh, imaging algorithm. And we should see what a ship's wheel looks like on radar. Okay. There it is. So, there's one spoke, two spoke. There's the top left, top right. That's the bottom spoke. It's probably the hub in the middle, and then you can vaguely see the outline of the wheel itself. So that is a ship's wheel on radar. Next, we'll image a car. Okay, now we're going to image my car. And uh, I'm a big fan of Ford automobiles. That's a focus. Stick shift, and uh, we're going to try... Okay, so same drill, 192 range profiles, averaging 10 times each. Everything's ready to go. Alright, so it should take about uh, 15 minutes. Okay, the scan's done, and I'll pull the data off the computer, I'll let the radar go back to home, and we'll process the image. Okay, so now uh, I've loaded the data into MATLAB, and I'll run the uh, script, show the image of the car. Okay, and here it is. So we have there's the front of the car. You can kind of see the curvature of the vehicle. There's the side of it. Side view mirror, rear view mirror. Not sure what that is. Maybe that's um, one of the pillars, sport pillars of the vehicle. Uh, here's the side of the car, front of the car. And here's the wheel that's kind of turned a little bit, so it's not quite running uh, parallel with the side of the car. Um, yeah, the radar won't see the opposite side of the car because it... Uh, obviously is shadowed, but you got a really nice outline there. So there's a car on radar. And in addition to this, I'll show a couple other images of model airplanes and my bicycle, a few other things acquired with this radar.